Mr. Beckett. I'll uh, handle Tracy's. Red mic on. Green, green means go. So they're different, different places. All right, I can gavel us in. We're good. We have four. Good evening. This meeting of the Milburn Short Hills Business Organization Incorporated is called to order. Today is Thursday, February 16th, 2023. The time is now 631. Um, I'll do the sunshine since I'm right here. A notice of the time, date, location, and agenda of this meeting to the extent known was provided at least 48 hours prior to the commencement of this meeting in the following manner pursuant to the provisions of the Open Public's Meet Public Meetings Act. Notice was posted in Town Hall and the Township's website by notification to newspapers on December 27th, 2022 of the schedule for 2023 and by providing notice to the Township Clerk. Please stand to join me in the salute to the flag. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Steve, do you want to jump in on roll call? I will. Alexa Clark. Present. Michael Parlavecchio. Present. Annette Romano. Here. Stephen Weiner. Here. Jesse Molman. Here. Tracy Katz Levine. Here. And we are waiting on Richard, who will be a few minutes late. And is Ashley on the Zoom? He is not. Okay, at the start of each meeting, we read uh, the SID mission statement. And the purpose of the Special Improvement District SID, is to promote, grow, and support local businesses, property owners, residents, and visitors. Milburn Township SID ordinance designates a new district management corporation whose mission is to encourage the economic, cultural, and social vitality of Milburn Township through increased marketing and visibility, improved and renewed infrastructure, and local business development and engagement. Tracy, you want to catch your breath and I can jump in and do this? Or are you good? Um, I'm good. Okay, can you, uh, we have approval of minutes? Yes, yeah, so let's see. We have minutes. First from January, we have four different um, sets of minutes. So first we have January 19th, our last meeting. We've got enough questions or do we need, can we do one motion to approve all of these? Or uh, should we do one at a time? I can right? do January. Okay. So all right, so we have to do one at a time. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we could do voice vote. I mean, we could just do voice That's, a voice vote is fine. Okay, can I have a motion to move the January 19th, 2023 um, minutes? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have minutes of December 15th, 2022. Better have a chance to look and review. A motion to approve those minutes? Motion. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor for the for December 15th? Here. Yeah, for those of us, for those of us here. who were here and eligible. Aye. Aye. Okay, then we have closed session minutes from May 12th, 2022. Does everybody have a chance to look at those? Um, can I have a motion to approve those minutes? If you are there. Motion. Second. You know who's eligible for those? Yeah. I think it's going to be everybody besides Lex and Annette. Okay. I have a second, please. Can I second? Yes, you can. Okay, second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Last, we have the uh, approval of the closed session minutes from September 13th, 2022. Can I have a motion, please? Motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, just before we get rolling a little bit, you'll notice uh, a little bit of a new look agenda. We've moved the public comment session to later in the meeting after we've uh, had an opportunity to discuss some of the items, but before the board takes action. So uh, the purpose of this is to give the public an opportunity to go through the agenda with the board, listen to what the board has to say in discussion and comment. 
and then uh, gives the public an opportunity to voice their opinion and express their opinion before the board takes any official action. So that's why it's not at the uh, first part of the meeting, but it's been moved to the end. New business presentation. Steve, do you want me to do this? Please. Okay. Uh, new business. We have new business in town, the Ethical Mattress Company at 387 Milburn Avenue. And with us today is Brian Umaker. Did I pronounce that correctly? You Umaker. You Umaker. Listen, I have gone through my life spelling my name and <laughs> pronouncing it 10 times. So I want to say it the right way. Yeah. You Umaker. Okay. Welcome. Do you want to introduce yourself in your yeah. business? I'm Brian Umiker. I just opened the Ethical Mattress Company right across the parking lot at 387 Milburn. Uh, for many years, I was the buyer and divisional merchandise manager for Bloomingdale's for the furniture and mattress business there. I also worked at Bed Bath & Beyond, and most recently I was vice president of Wholesale for Casper. Um, so opening the mattress store, I'm bringing a long background and experience in the mattress business. Wanted to open my own store. Everything we sell is made from natural materials. Everything is made right here locally in New Jersey. And uh, when we take your old mattress, we don't put it in the landfill, we recycle it, which is a challenge in New Jersey because we don't have recycling laws for mattresses in New Jersey. But I wanna make sure that we're not contributing to the landfill. Um, I can't say enough how wonderful my experience has been in opening the store. I have a great landlord that helps. But these two have been amazing. Thank you, Steve and Amanda. Um, gotten some very nice social media pointers. The directory that you guys provide for all of the businesses in town has really helped me with my outreach to fellow businesses. And that's been uh, a great experience. So thank you so much. I don't know if you're elected officials or volunteers. We are volunteers. You are Except volunteers. For Annette is uh, on the township committee. God bless all of you for giving your time. I just, I can't say enough how much respect I have for that. Thank you. Um, and I invite you all to stop by. I'm gonna leave some business cards here. Uh, I invite you all to stop by, come in sometime, just say hello, see the store. And of course, if you need, you know, if, if you're not sleeping great, I mean, I'm a good person to know, all right? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Welcome. Good luck with the new business. Thank you. Ethical Mattress 387 Milburn Avenue. That is an unpaid announcement. <laughs> I, I just have a Go ahead, please. Are you the only ethical mattress? Is it a franchise? This is my very first store. Okay. And uh, I'm hoping maybe to have two, three stores in the next four or five years. Okay. Um, but this is my first store and all of my time and energy and focus is right here, right? Great. Can I stay right, for 60 more seconds? Yeah, sure. So it's not just mattresses, as we learned at the mixer that we did last not week. Not just mattresses. You have a very those, interesting- Anything that re is related to sleep. Can you tell us about that really cool pillow that you offer? You see the pillows I just got in today, <laughs> uh, which I tagged you on Instagram. <laughs> um, I have these great pillows that are also natural and organic materials, and you can adjust them. You can literally unzip and open the pillow and take some of the fill out to make it the perfect loft for you. So you don't have to have a, a pillow that's too too full or not full enough. And I got these new down pillows in today that they don't go flat. It's all down, 100% down, no feather blend. And they are, uh, I get them from a woman owned company in Texas called Pillow Bar. And each one is made specific to your age, height and sleeps position. So it's really a personalized pillow. So lots of good things like that. It's great mattresses, Schiffman mattresses. The president of Schiffman is a Short Hills resident. Um, he's excited that I'm selling his mattresses in town. So um, really a, a nice local flavor. Great. That's great. Thank, Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Brian. Yeah. Okay. We're going to uh, move along. Annette with the Township Committee Report. Thank you. Um, at our last meeting, we uh, passed resolutions uh, to be in compliance with the Fair Share Housing Settlement. And there's also going to be a public discussion um, on the fields uh, Thursday, March 2nd at the library. Um, and then another 
uh, session will be scheduled after that uh, with a virtual component. That's what I have. Do you have any questions? Attached committee report. Uh, we'll go to the business administrator report. Jesse, that's you. That's this morning, uh, myself, Mr. Grillo, and Mr. McDonald met with uh, business owners that had questions about the transition to private contracts for solid waste and recycling. Um, an updated was let, sent, uh, updated letter was sent back on January 10th, and that will go into effect on June 1st. Um, and as always, if any business owners have any questions about the change, they can reach out to me and my information is on the township website. Uh, we'll move on to Stephen and the treasurer's report. Uh, thank you. Uh, as uh, included in the packet, uh, as posted for this meeting, our balance in the bank as of January 31 was $20,417. Um, uh, you may notice that the township allocation that we normally receive in toward January, February, you know, very early in the year, we received uh, $14,000 of it, about 26% of what the township will pay us, uh, and that is the amount allowed in town in the town preliminary budget. Um, so we are just waiting for the township to pass its full budget, so we'll get our full allocation. Um, that's pretty much it. Everything is self-explanatory. So, any questions? Can I ask a question just off of that, and that maybe you know, or just you know, is the budget introduction? Is there a scheduled date for that for the township budget? Don't believe we've scheduled that yet. Usually it occurs um, around March or April, I think. The tax bills have also gone out. So we're hoping that some of the early payers will, mm -hmm. will pay and then we'll get our first uh, tranche of money as well. So <laughs> we're being uh, austere over the next couple of weeks. We don't have any major expenses planned, um, but Amanda and I are being very diligent to make sure that uh, we, you know, this is the dry season in the SID. Um, and so <laughs> we're, we're, we're being very careful how we spend it. Well, it's interesting because after the busiest season. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. <laughs> it's really the way it works, you gotta squirrel it away. Okay, thanks, Stephen. Uh, next, uh, market, marketing and events report. Hang on one minute. Amanda, I've learned that this is your one year anniversary oh, with us. Oh, wow. <laughs> the indefatigable Amanda <laughs> Dean. There should be a show about it. So, congratulations. Thank, Thank you, you for spending yes. a year. For really, I mean, to say you've made a, contri a contribution is mm -hmm. an understatement. So, Thank you. Thank Congratulations you. to you. Thank you. I can stand up. Whatever. I'm going to try and keep this quick, even though I have a lot to say today. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, um, first, I just want to do a brief review of public art. Um, what we have slated for the next for this quarter and the second quarter of the year. Um, starting with founding day, we're going to be working with Jesus Nunez um, on a community art project, which will be really interesting. And it's going to tie into the art show that we're going to have downtown as part of founding day. Um, and that's going to be local artists, uh, people from the town or you know, Essex County and, and nearby. So that's all coming together really <laughs> nicely. Um, we are going to have the artwork, uh, Ann Shoshki's artwork, installed on the parking kiosks. So that'll be kind of an unveiling. Um, Chris, who, Chris Kernia, he's the new owner of Goldberg's, um, very talented individual. And so we're going to be utilizing his photography to put on big bellies, you know, uh, images of butterflies and bees and things like that. And then he also has a few different concepts that we're looking to uh, put in the art alley as well. Uh, the next set of items are the vacant storefront initiative. I've met with Carlo, who's the owner of 565 Milburn Avenue, and we're gonna put the um, mandalas by uh, Carol um, Nussman. So those are, I'm, I'm finishing putting the proposal together for him, but he's 
he's approved and he's very excited to have that. And then we're also going to be putting um, artwork uh, as window clings at um, the Fetters building. Um, and that's most likely gonna be uh, some of Chris Kerna, Kernia's photography, which would really suit that well. And then we have uh, approved um, a, a mural for Style and Canine that will be installed um, and as well. And that's at Short Hill Station. And then we're also gonna be doing um, Lindsay Palumbo's chalk art. We're gonna do as decals, as like street decals that you can walk on. Um, at Short Hill Station. And then we have a few pending items. One is the, the ShopRite mural that we've talked about several times. Um, they wanted to kind of put it aside for the winter and they're gonna have a new meeting in March. So they're gonna revisit it in March and then we should know whether we're moving forward there or not. Uh, that would be fantastic if we did. And then um, uh, Mr. Mandelbaum, uh, the old, Bowtie Theater building, we are working with him on a couple of concepts uh, that uh, we'd like to install there. He approached us, so hopefully something will come of it. So that's the, the public art news uh, for the next several months. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, so next, um, Steve has been diligent and I've helped where I can. Um, and putting together uh, business education programming for this year. And so um, I just wanna go over uh, what, what's coming down the pike. The first thing just happened was the small business tax seminar. Um, and this is part of a series that uh, Citizens Bank Foundation has sponsored. It's for minority women and immigrant entrepreneurs. Um, and the UCEDC, which you all are familiar with, they've done presentations here, um, they're the ones that are um, putting on the training. The next one in that series is writing a business plan. Uh, after that, it's understanding your financial statements, uh, projecting financial results, and pricing for small business profitability. So there's one each month uh, through June. And then it's something that's been requested by many businesses is they want more social media training. So um, we have a small business SEO training uh, scheduled for March 3rd and SEO. search engine optimization. And that's um, going to be um, taught by Bolt Ahead, which is one of the partners in the new um, interior motif business on Upper Milburn Ave, um, which I'll mention they're having a, a mixer um, soon. And then um, JMT Media is gonna be performing two different social media trainings. One is intermediate and one is advanced. Um, Sorry, who's doing that? JMT Media. And then um, the Milburn Public Library, we're working with them. They have a web development for small businesses that um, we're gonna be um, pushing you know, for our businesses to attend. And then in general, um, I'm gonna be doing a customer lifetime value training a two-part uh, series in, at the end of March. Um, we're also going to do a bus business to business training um, of using social media leaders in Milburn because there are a lot of really talented people here. And so we want to utilize that and, and possibly have it as a panel. We're still developing it. And then a professional service focus group because so much of what we do is um, towards the, the shops and everything else, there's all these professional services that we want to find out more about what they want from us and what we can do. Um, so that that's on the slate as well. Um, any questions? And Amanda, just before you continue, yeah. I wanted to uh, make sure the record notes that Richard Wasserman is here. Um, when you, uh, a question, when you're saying professional services, you're, talk, you're talking about lawyers, accountants, whoever is in, yeah. in the district. Exactly. In the districts. Okay. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Okay. So on to events. Um, so the Citizens Bank, um, they're having an opening reception uh, next Tuesday, and that's at 10 a.m. Um, the Lunar New Year event, which, you know, we help them market it, um, that will be on March 5th. That is going to be a Saturday. No, that's Sunday. Sunday. Um, 
10 a.m. on um, the 21st. It's uh, Tuesday. And your schedule is also attachment three. Yeah. So you guys have that as well. And these are on the website. I have to update it to remove the tax seminar, but these should be on the website. Um, and then the merchant mixer uh, that's going to be happening on March 9th is going to be at Interior Motif. And they are pulling out all the stops. They're going to have the, uh, the, the, the supercars out in front. Uh, HGTV will be there. It's going to be quite an event. Um, so we are encouraging businesses to go and um, mingle and everything. But uh, this will probably be one of the bigger, flashier events yeah. of the winter. Uh, so we're really excited about it and um, how much the, the, the store itself is investing into that Brand opening slash merchant mixer. Can you address again, please? 519 Milburn Ave. 519. They're right next to, uh, was it short? Is it tight? Yeah, the former yeah. Bacone. Oh. They're in between two vacant buildings. No, in between no, the, the stone the and time. Yeah, next yeah. one. Um, and then the, uh, the big thing that I'm working on um, diligently is uh, Restaurant Week. It's going to be our first one. We're having it from March 20th to the 26th. Um, all the restaurants have been invited to participate. I've been working with um, wine shops and bakeries this week to is that up there. Okay. Um, I'll, yeah, I'll go through that. Uh, so I've been working with wine shops and bakeries to find out how there can be partnering opportunities with the restaurants, with the BYOB or desserts, things like that. Um, and then next week, I'm going to be pounding the pavement, going to everybody I can um, to get everyone signed up. We already have. Common Lot, Milburn Deli, Milburn Standard, uh, Boxcar. Um, we have Splurge. We have uh, Taste Buddy. Um, I'm missing a couple, but we have. We already have. Oh yeah, um, Moonshine just signed up. So everybody's um, Basilico. They're all coming on board. And uh, besides the partnership opportunities within the business community, we're also partnering with Opportunity Project. Um, March is Brain Injury Awareness Month. And so Opportunity Project, um, they raise money uh, to support people that are recovering from this and help them with training and skills so that they can get back out into the workforce. And so one of the things that they can do is they can do certain tasks that restaurants need. And so um, we're, we're introducing that partnership to the restaurants, whether they want to support by giving a percentage of proceeds or whether they may have opportunities for employment there. We know a lot of people have been struggling to hire. So that's something that's happening as well. And um, let me just see if there's anything else. The website, um, if we scroll, so this, this is talking about, like this is kind of the main design um, and each restaurant's gonna have its own profile. Um, Jesse, can you go to the featured restaurants? So this talks about all the different options, trying to make this as visual as possible, but it, it'll say whether it's a BYOB, whether they have in-house desserts or they're partnering with somebody, whether they're partnering with Opportunity Project, and if we have the menu. So Milburn Standard, we've got everything from them. Um, it indicates which uh, district they're in as well. Um, if they have prefix, you know, all the details you could need to make a decision, and then they already have their menu, so we have it available there. And so we'll have this profile for each uh, restaurant or shop that participates. And then um, once I have everybody signed up, I'm gonna have searchable um, area for search by cuisine, search by BYOB, and links to, to uh, make reservations and things like that. So I've been working hard on this and uh, we already had great press with the patch. I think it was yesterday, the day before. Yes. Um, so we're, we're off to a good start. Amanda, what can people expect of Restaurant Week? Are they special menus? Are they promotion, different promotions? Yes. What's the... So, um, like the prefix uh, menus, um, I know with some of the restaurants, because they're kind of strapped, they're, they're trying to utilize what they already do and, and package it. Okay. Um, others are doing something different, um, like most likely um, Saigon Cafe. I was, I was meeting with Andy yesterday. He's probably going to do a lunch special with a free dessert or a free drink. And that, you know, we'll do a special promotion too, 
the businesses in town that, you know, lunch local this week. Um, there's all the options. So it's really going to depend on the restaurant, how, what they want to do, but we're going to present all that information here. The meals we're promoting are lunch, dinner, uh, Saturday family brunch and Sunday brunch. Um, so, uh, is splurge doing anything cool? <sighs> I don't want to give it all away in the first. I don't know. So, it's pretty cool. It is cool. So I met with Julie yesterday and we were talking about what might work for splurge. And she has candy striper trays with the uh, what are they like? The suspenders. The suspenders. So she's gonna have staff members with free samples um, probably Thursday and Friday and Saturday night of that week walking around handing those out, which will be really cool walking so, around town mm -hmm. yeah oh, wow. oh, yeah great. so i think that's going to be a selfie opportunity i think that's going to get us some post press um so very excited about that uh do we have any opportunity to capture any of this on video uh and just the event oh um, yeah i just think that would be great to capture you know people walking into different establishments maybe keep that on our website or promote it on Instagram. Yeah, Amanda and I will be working nights that week yes, to uh, we'll get plenty of social media content. Yeah. No, and we're also, I already have a starting list of influencers, uh, food influencers, uh, food critics. And then as I meet with people, I'm asking them, who do you know, you know, uh, so we can really get this out there. I've already done a general press release. Once I have the rest of the restaurants signed up, then I'll do another one. And then we're going to invite these people to come in and you know, get a taste of Milburn. So, um, yeah, we've got a lot of, of things happening, but I think it's going to be a really nice event. Um, so that's the, uh, the restaurant week, um, kind of update. Um, I think the only thing I missed, um, is just to comment a little bit on founding day. Um, as, as we did last year, um, designed, uh, the marketing help with the marketing in general, We'll be doing posters and signage. Um, we're going to end up doing a map of activities because there is so much happening, which Jackie will talk about, <laughs> um, but to be a guide for people. Um, and then it's for Explorer's interest, we've talked about this before, that we want to start having postcards that we'll have at our big events that tell people who Explorer is on one side and on the other side, our upcoming events. Um, so we've, we've got a lot of things we're trying to be really thoughtful about how we promote, explore, and, and participate as well. Um, but I think I think that's what I have to cover. Does anyone have any questions for me? Can you just give the dates again for restaurant week? March 20th to March 26th. So it's a Monday through a Sunday. Great. Yep. And as I have more information, I'll certainly be sending it to you guys. Do you have any questions for Amanda? Comments? I don't know how you got all this done. <laughs> we had, we really took January to plan and just sit down and think, you know, how, what resources we have. And um, so it's allowed, it, it's allowed me to sit and then just focus on something because I, I know what's coming. So that very grateful for that time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Jackie, advisory committee and CEDAR report. Okay. Okay. Good evening, everyone. So we we uh, we are really moving along uh, on founding day. I must say that uh, last year was sort of our kickoff. The, obviously, the years before was canceled because of COVID, but now we <clears throat> this is really turning out to be a uh, a really an extensive event. We have over ten community organizations participating. So we're casting a really wide net and uh, people are being responsive and responsible. So we've got, so far, the Boy Scouts, cultural engagement. We'll have representation for our food pantry. We're gonna stuff the bus. We have the Green Team, the Environmental Commission, Explore Melbourne Short Hills, the Melbourne Short Hills Historical Society, the Township and all their assistants, Paper Mill Playhouse, Shade Tree, and the Short Hills Garden Club. I may be missing a couple, but it's it's still a work in progress mm -hmm. a bit. So the morning activities will run similarly to what we did last year, except we're gonna, I spoke to the Short Hills Garden Club and they'd like to expand it to all, um, not only our own five districts of the, of the, of the, of the bid, 
but also have the green teams from the various schools participate and kind of take advantage of Earth Day and really kind of kick it up a notch uh, uh, in the community. So you'll have the green teams from all the elementary schools, the middle school and the high school, the environmental commission, as well as the Short Hills uh, Garden Club kind of sending out their minions and their little, their, their armies to all these various locations um, to really kind of make an effort to really kick it up in terms of beautification and cleanliness of Melbourne. Then uh, as Amanda mentioned, Explore will be having these um, various uh, working closely with Main Street Pops. What I'll say is the art, correct me if I'm wrong, ladies and gentlemen, the art alley, the courtyard, Main Street, and uh, Rose Garden. When I say Main Street, it's the, um, it's the area across from All Together Now next to Teen Skin. And there will be various art um, displays as well as some participatory activities at, at those locations. Maybe also we'll have something going on by All Together Now, depending on our turnout and our, and our response rate. Um, but that all that art is going to be happening to in, both with our local Melbourne Short Hills artists, as well as our uh, artists from the greater, um, you know, greater Essex Union Morris area. And it's it's fine art, just to be clear. This yes. I end. Yes. This could be a great opportunity for the interior designers and other businesses to make some connections. So. Um, the Environmental Commission um, will be inside of Bower Center doing the milkweed plantings for kids to take home in a track. We're talking to the environmental about planting another elm tree. We will be celebrating at three o'clock a birthday party for the elm tree at the entrance of Taylor Park. Um, there will be 19th century music where, uh, from 12, no, from one to three. Correct? 12 to two. 12 to 2. Okay. The music is 12 to 2. Stand corrected. Um, we'll also have the calligraphy workshop um, also going on inside Bauer. Uh, Dorothy will be running some historic tours. There'll be, uh, there'll be also be, a, um, David Sorkin is working on some maps that'll tell uh, the community where, what things were, where they were in, in, in previous times. And we'll have those maps either displayed in the actual stores that they, they're in, um, but that, that will also be available. Um, and as I mentioned, there is a tremendous opportunity. The three o'clock celebration will be at the, at the big tree at, at the entrance of Taylor Park. There's a tremendous opportunity to volunteer. Uh, there'll be something for everybody. There'll be excuse me, there'll be a wide calendar starting at, uh, at 9 a.m., running all the way through five o'clock in two hour blocks. So whatever time anybody wants to give, there'll be an opportunity for them to participate. So um, the, only, uh, the only caveat is that I'm uh, mandating that everybody here pray for good weather. <laughs> um, and our rain date is the next day, the 23rd. Um, so that's coming along really, really nicely. And I'm very grateful to explore to, to Amanda and to Steve because they're, they're really um, amazing. And, and it's really an opportunity for, to engage residents, businesses, mm -hmm. um, visitors. It, it, people are gonna come to Melbourne for this event. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very confident that we are casting a really wide net to engage as many people as possible. So, um, I'm excited about that. Uh, May 21st, looking ahead, uh, we're having our Sea to Sunday event. Uh, I've been in touch with an Indian dance troupe, as well as a uh, Chinese group, a multi-generational dance and performance. Um, one to three, two to four, we're not quite sure yet, but that mm -hmm. mark your calendar for that. That'll be rain or shine, indoor or outdoor, depending on the weather, and that will be at Bauer. Um, June 4th, where um, SEED is partnering with Paperbill, and we're working through some, uh, some, date, uh, some plans for Pride Day, um, TBD, to be discussed. So we're moving, moving through that. And that concludes my reports. That's Thank you. Chuck, full. you've been busy. <laughs> Thanks, Jackie. Anybody have any questions for Jackie?
Um, and we'll be able to talk about this also at the next meeting. Yes. So, more to come. Uh, Executive Director Report, Steve. Thank you, Chairman. A couple quick updates. The Summer Music Series, which has been a huge success for us, uh, is fully booked for 33 slots between the end of June and Labor Day. Um, this will be in the Main Street Pedestrian Mall. We're going to be coming to the Township Committee for approval and an ordinance uh, to close the Pedestrian Mall uh, June 23rd, and then keep it closed through no, uh, through September 3rd. Um, this is uh, be a one-time closure as opposed to what we've done in the past where it was closed on weekends and reopened. Uh, that's uh, It's a hardship for a lot of the businesses to reassemble furniture. It's difficult on traffic and it is expensive for us to have the Department of Public Works and the Police Department engaged. So um, I think this is uh, not only a good way for us to manage our budget and then, you know, not to have 50 shows, but 30 shows, um, but also keep the uh, the town costs down. So um, we'll be working with Alex and Jesse to get that on the township committee's agenda for consideration. Um, but this was great. We actually booked all 33 shows within 36 hours of putting it out. So um, there was... There was a lot of demand uh, to get this some, done. Some new names. There are some new names. There's some returning folks. There's some folks that were on the wait list last year that were able to get on this year. And I already have six bands on a wait list uh, for this year. So if we uh, we come into a little extra cash, sponsors, 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 um, we can always bring on more acts. But uh, right now, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from the end of June through Labor Day are completely booked. So looking forward to... Uh, rebuilding that pedestrian mall and all the the games and and things that we have out there it's it's a great place in the summertime is there music in other locations or just uh, downtown so last year we did um, remote locations outside of the downtown every sunday uh, we were doing it usually 11 to 1 for jazz music and small groups it didn't work as well as we had hoped there just isn't the same foot traffic that's in the pedestrian mall and so we thought a better a uh, resource for our money was to just spend it where we do have that large pedestrian traffic on weekends. But um, that doesn't mean we're not doing other things in the other districts. As, as Amanda pointed out, most of our public art is going to be in outer districts. And we have a number of events that we're planning in, in outer districts as well. Um, some of the stuff you didn't see that's coming up in the third and fourth quarter, um, you know, doing things like Upper Milburn Avenue Day to coincide with the opening in the Metropolitan. So there'll be music and entertainment. It just won't be specific to this program. Okay. Thank you. Um, also, we are working with Alex on this year's townwide sign signage program. So um, Alex has tasked me with, it seems now every year, to come up with new signage plans for the town. So uh, we are actually, we've completed two phases uh, out of a potential six through 2024. So uh, the first one was installing the 66 street pole banners that we have in all five of our districts. Um, that are color coded to our branding. Then we last year finished signage um, or installed signage on the parking deck as well as some uh, signage to show drivers where the parking deck is all throughout the downtown. And then we did some pedestrian scale signage at the art alley. So that project was completed in November. Um, I'm currently working to, uh, so there's gonna be a redevelopment or a reconstruction of parking lot 14, which is um, behind the, uh, the building where uh, Jack's Lobster Shack and, and uh, Bagel Pantry are on Upper Milburn, that's probably gonna be in August. And so while we, the town does that reconstruction project, um, Alex has asked me to handle the signage portion of it. So we'll be removing any non-conforming signage, we'll be improving all of the directional signage so that that parking lot will be much more visible. Um, so that project will also be branded to the yellow that is Upper Milburn Avenue. Um, and so that'll be consistent with what we did in the downtown in November. And then also this year, we're hoping to do large welcome signs, as well as smaller uh, welcome signs for each of the districts. So, uh, for instance, when you come into downtown, um, there'll be a, you know, where the, the traffic triangle right here is, there'll be a large kind of rock style that says welcome to downtown Milburn. But then when you enter the Wyoming district, there'll be a sign in the red Wyoming color that'll say Wyoming Shopping District. And then there'll be directional signage saying, you know, Morris Turnpike up from Milburn Avenue this way, downtown that way. Um, and so I've designed that program. And then I'm going to start working with uh, a project manager who did the uh, previous work that we have and, and come up with some pricing. But it's going to be a big project, but it needs to be done. Uh, we don't have any welcome signage. So um, it's important. And then um, just as a 
what where we're hoping to go with that in 2024 is once that welcome signage is done, we'll be installing pedestrian scale signage. So that will say Taylor Park this way, paper mill that way, you know, just trying to help people navigate their way through the town. Um, that'll focus on historic locations, cultural locations, public art, et cetera. And then I actually spoke with Dorothy Kelly from the Historical Society today um, about doing historic markers in 2024, 2025, um, and trying to you know, keep the same branding, the same contextual look, um, but highlighting instead of commercial aspects, historic aspects of the town. So um, that is a long way out, but that is the plan is to just keep knocking these off and putting in a totally comprehensive signage program. So I wanted to give you an update on that. Um, in the exciting world of audit requests for proposals, um, I sent out six RFPs um, to uh, folks in Springfield, Milburn, um, and the local area. Uh, only one responded that they were interested. That price was above what we're paying now. So I excluded them. Um, I did contact the remaining five. Um, they either said they weren't interested in doing a SID or they weren't bringing on new candidates. So um, with, if there's no, no objection from the board, I'd like to widen the net a little bit and try to get out, uh, you know, put this RFP out again. Um, and, and hopefully by next month, I'll have someone that bites. Um, and then the final issue is um, at our last meeting, we had a presentation from Beyond Maine regarding the gift card program and the uh, online sales platform. And we had a conversation, but we didn't finish it. And uh, the chairman asked me to put it on the agenda for tonight to uh, come up with a, a conclusion on how uh, we want to proceed. So um, unless someone wants a recap, I think we can just open it for conversation. Um, anybody have any questions or comments on Beyond Maine? We've had two presentations from them. Um, I think it's an interesting project. I don't think it's a fully baked project yet for us. So my, my thoughts are it might be a little premature to uh, make that investment. I don't know if anybody else has any thoughts or reactions to what they offered. Tracy, you know, sure. I'll go after Tracy. I like the energy and ideas, but I agree that I'd be interested to kind of see where the company goes and how other towns do. And I think with everything that we're focusing on, that I, yeah, I wouldn't suggest prioritizing it for this year, but something. Yeah, to... yeah it's a significant investment. Yeah. And you're right, maybe this year is not the year for us. Is the, I, I concur I, with, with what has been said. I'm just, uh, Steve, I'm just asking you and Amanda, is there any other programs or any other that we had Nadej, when Nadej was on the board, she mentioned that Gifty, Gifty, yeah. Gifty, Gifty. Yeah, Gifty. Gifty right. So is there, any, is there any other companies that we should be, I'm just asking that would perhaps I just wish we could just have an Explore Melbourne and Short Hills gift card and, like <laughs> and call it a day. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and encourage, you know. I was almost thinking that, you know, the, pro, the, the program is an interesting program, but there are, there are issues that I think we're all engaged. You know, there are issues with it. I, I was almost wondering in the back of my mind whether there's something with that Explore could do organically kind of take some of those some of the things that might be interesting uh, that they offer uh, and and develop kind of develop some of it in our website, uh, you know, just kind of uh, merchant maybe. And I also wasn't happy that there was, there was not kind of a physical gift card. It was kind of I think it was all digital. Yes. So as a merchant, I mean, I, I think it's kind of invaluable to kind of hand somebody. A gift card and say, you know, here, here's something for you, go spend it, as opposed to here's an email. You know, it's like a different, it's a little bit different, but for a lot of businesses, to hand somebody something, you know, has some value in my opinion. So the answer to Jackie's question is um, after literally now about two years of investigation, no, I think Beyond Maine is the best option. Okay. However, I don't think it's the right option for us right now for all the reasons that everyone said. But I, I, in evaluating other programs, I think theirs is the best. Um, what I think is interesting is that a number of towns and companies have gone to this digital platform. Yet when you hear from Beyond Maine that 
12 businesses are signed up or 14 businesses. It's interesting that there's been this call for a modern currency, right? But it doesn't seem to be particularly successful. And so there's a, I think there's certainly an opportunity that maybe we could create some type of physical gift card, maybe do it for the holiday season. Um, you know, give us some time to get through everything else that we're working on and maybe do a, a 60 day, 45 day trial um, and see if there's even interest. Um, and I think the holiday season makes sense for it. But um, I think at this point, you're going to be hard pressed to find anybody that's really doing these physical cards because these transactions, for the most part, are happening online anyway. Um, and so I, I think if, if you guys want us to look at a physical card, we certainly can, but I think it's going to have to be done. I think to steal Stephen's term was organic, right? I think it's going to have to be handled kind of in house. Um, yeah. And, you know. That's a downside, but you got to busy on other yeah. things mm -hmm. you, you have enough to do right? and and what's what's the payoff right is the question you know how much money can you really generate um you know even if we're taking you know 10 percent, you know and we get 10 bucks out of a hundred dollar gift card you know it's going to take a lot of a lot of cards to make up the cost of our time doing the program and they don't have such a good follow-up and, and then yeah. actually i was disappointed to hear that what they were offering us that their menu of uh, uh their menu to us was something that they haven't sold to, you know, yeah. you know, ha haven't sold, you know, to other. And they're the most successful in New Jersey. <laughs> so. yeah, so, and the only, the last thought I, I would offer is that I wonder when we're ready to put our toe in the water, whether they could offer us something that more intro, less money, and say, you know, what, you know, maybe it was two, maybe instead of spending their minimum. Mm -hmm. We spent two or three thousand and say, let's see if this thing works. You know, spend less, more of an intro, kind of like, a, let's say, a trial, you know, where we invest less to try mm -hmm. it, you know, when we're ready. One thing just to mention from a while back, I don't know if we could maybe reach out to the Livingston folks. A different approach they take was their, their bid or SID subsidizing or enabling businesses to sell their um, their own gift cards at a discount. Mm -hmm. um, and then like putting a whole campaign about it, like, you know, support all of these Livingston businesses and they offered up to a certain number of gift cards at discounted prices. Yeah, and there's a couple of communities that do kind of like monopoly money, right? Where you get credits back and then you can go back to the SID and, you know, for the, every hundred dollars you spend, you're eligible for a raffle for a $25 card or something like that. Um, that's all feasible. I'm not sure we want to be in the business of doing that for 365 yeah. days a year. Um, no, definitely not. But I, I think it's, it's interesting, right? I, th I think two years ago, there was a real clamor for this in a lot of communities and we didn't pull the trigger. I think we were very judicious about it. And I'm really glad because I'm not sure this is the best system uh, for anybody, let alone us. And, and there's so much other things that we do that I think are really positive. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to put the brakes on a bit. I think we've done as much homework as we can, but maybe this is a seasonal thing that we can try in the winter time. Sounds complicated. Or the, <laughs> or the summer, you know, there's the, if you go back, the, it's old fashioned gift cards, you could create summer bucks because right. everyone's, you know, the town is gone, but maybe you buy summer bucks and you get like discounts in stores to encourage people to shop in town, even over the summer. You know, I, I just come up with that name, but you know, but it is an old fashioned card. They just show it at the stores and, and you get something. Or maybe for $200, you get $225 worth of yeah. spending yeah. hours. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, I mean, that's more a la carte. It, it's the, yeah. You're going back to the, the coupon circular, right? Yeah, Essentially. Yeah, and fashion. and I think it's really interesting that you bring that up, right? As I said before, it's you know, if we got 50 businesses to agree that if you show up with the Explore Milburn card, you get 10% off. I mean, you couldn't make it much simpler, right? right? Which is funny that we've kind of gone full circle. Um, but maybe that is the solution, right. just simplicity. In the summer, you know, it does clear out and kids are gone and the town gets real quiet. So and we could even put in something where you know you have to come into Explore to purchase it. And we charge a nominal fee. You Just know, keep in mind the, the library, um, the friends, of the yeah, the friends of the Milburn Library. Oh, that's, that's right. They have like your big 
yeah, I feel like they. Oh, good catch. The, yeah, I feel yeah. like that's really a problem. key. Yeah. No, that's the unique money. thing that you get with your friends at the Melbourne Library yeah. membership mm-hmm. is a discount card to like forty different oh, businesses. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, gotta join the Friends of Melbourne Library. I it was. <laughs> That's already was, but I never got to get your card. I never got the card. And they need to get you your card. Um, I mean, to me, I feel like when we had excitement about it, it was more around, you know, for people giving all the teacher gifts. Wouldn't it be so nice to give yeah. a gift card to Melbourne or companies, you know, being able to give the holiday gifts as shopping in Melbourne? I mean, I think. That well, I think what, what comes out of it, right, no is that simple way to do that. there's a serious transaction problem, exactly. right? Yeah. And I don't think we appreciated that early on. Yeah. And then as we've dived in, it's like, it's actually really hard to get these yeah. businesses. Well, just on the other side of the coin, most gift cards that are there, like all of the mall gift cards, also mm-hmm. coming from working in a lot of years in credit card field, they may be labeled, it's a Short Hills Mall gift card or it's a Simon Mall gift card, but it's actually a MasterCard visa that could be used right. anywhere. Right. So you kind of have the two extremes. You have the very manual mm. process that they're trying to create. And then and I think most was, everyone's just using these branded cards, but they're not really limited. To and that was a conversation I think we had with Yifty probably the better part of a year and a half ago, which was how do we limit the geography? You know, if we're spending SID assessment dollars and SID director and marketing director time, and someone's taking the money and spending it in Springfield. And most of these entities other than Beyond Maine had no way to restrict the spending geographically. So that was a big red flag for us. And I think deservedly so. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been, the functionality of this has been extremely challenging. Okay, it's on hold for now. Yeah. Under advisement. Under advisement. <laughs> Under advisement. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions or comments before we go to public comments in its new slot? Okay, public comment session uh, section of the meeting. Um, when what, if you're here and you come to the mic, please state your name and your address, and you'll be give, given three minutes to speak. Same rules apply if you are joining us online. Uh, you will also have an opportunity to speak, and I, uh, you'll have to limit your comments to three minutes. So, Mr. Feld, you are the lone. You're on Jeffrey Feld, living out in Santa Lane. Since I was here last time, uh, I, I want to just disclose that I am litigation counsel for uh, concerned Melbourne residents in New Jersey, a uh, nonprofit corporation who's trying to intervene in the uh, fair share housing. Uh, first of all, thank you for changing the, the agenda for allowing public comments to come after all the presentations. Um, I'd just like to know why there, like, on your website, why the email addresses to the members of the board are no longer listed. Um, as to, with all due respect to the attorney, your note he does not supply time summaries. When you compare it to the township committee, there are time summaries, even for the amounts that are being put down on subject to retainer. Um, if you look at bill list of the township committee, there should be a clarification of like the $9,000 hiccup that occurred um, that you did not receive like the full assessment until January, even though you were giving monthly budgets showing that you had received that money because you're like sort of like on a cash basis. You reflected that you received what you didn't receive that. I just looked at for the future. Um, I'm glad, you know, you have your calendar of musical events. It wasn't clear whether the box cars, that area is going to be included in those areas. In addition, it's very important, and Jesse, this is reaching out to you, that we know what the costs were for 2020, 2021, and 2022 for the soft costs for um, closing down the Main Street closure. Um, it's very important. A meeting did occur this morning at 8.30 about the um, commercial solid waste removal. It was not advertised on the township public website. One thing that did come out from that meeting is that the administrative code has to be amended. And we're, everyone's trying to wonder how these notices went out prior to the amendment of the administrative code um, for this cost sex. There's also a lot of the sentiment is that businesses are now gonna assess or look at the cost that they're incurring. Besides the SID assessment, they're now going to have potentially as commercial solid waste additional cost. There was, uh, I think, I forget the church, 
the church came in and said that they're maybe going to be facing twelve thousand dollar charge that they never had before. Also, also this is um, also there's going to be increased property taxes, and also there's you need to get out to the public businesses that there's a state rule that they have to register um, their insurance policies with the town, and that's a, a headache. I mean, it's going to be an additional cost. Um, it's very important what happened today about the ordinance and commercial. I feel like and businesses are feeling like they're being taxed on a dunce tax, that they are paying because they're getting bad advice, not from your this attorney, but from other attorneys that they have to look out for. Everyone. But it's very important that we know the cost of the shutdown because of what happened with the part three analysis that soft costs that are being funded by the town. I just asked so you wrap up there. But again, I thank you. Is I, committee stuff. I, yeah. No, it ties into what goes on here because the businesses have to pay, pay this cost. When they go and issue $9.5 million bonds, your business owner's own property have to pay that bond back. But again, I thank you for changing your agenda. You're welcome. Okay, anybody online? Uh, Jesse. Hi, good evening. Jean Pasternak, 342 Hobart. Thanks for moving the comments. I agree. I think it's much better at the end. Uh, we have a chance to hear from you first. Um, could there be more outreach to educate the residents about what this SID is all about to let them know, like when you hold your meetings? I mean, they do partially fund the um, uh, SID, so it would give them an opportunity be able to participate and offer their suggestions. And there, you know, there are a lot of residents that have good ideas. And I think it would be good if they were made more aware of what you're doing. And many that I speak to really have no idea what the SID is or what Explore is. So I'm just wondering what outreach you're planning to do, if any, to the residents of the town. Uh, there was a police safety town hall. And, and what I heard from that was that many residents feel that were in attendance and spoke. They feel we need substantially more police patrols to improve the safety in town, especially um, as to do with car thefts and potential break-ins um, that are associated with those. They said there are not nearly enough patrols to keep up with the increase in the incidents. So uh, one thing I recall from last year that someone had done an analysis of the overtime of the police and most of it, like 80% of it was dedicated to the main street closures. And the police chief was indicating that, you know, they've kind of, they're maxed out in terms of the number of people they have, patrol cars, time that they can dedicate to overtime. So I'm just wondering if there's discussion about this and how it's being balanced out against the needs of, um, the as the residents expressed at this town hall. Uh, you also mentioned, Steve, I think about <coughs> signage. I would have to say, I felt it was rather underwhelming what I saw in lighting and holiday decor in the other four um, business districts. Is there anything planned to improve that uh, outside the downtown for next year, you know, throughout the year for those other districts? Um, just on the restaurant week, uh, I just it occurred to me listening to what Jeff was saying about, you know, people having to bear more costs and assess, essentially more taxation. Are the restaurants restaurants getting something out of having to subsidize, you know, a free whatever it is to incentivize participation in the uh, restaurant week? Um, I just am curious, like, what has been the response? Is, do they feel that it's going to help them? I guess so. But um, it seems like there are a lot of re uh, a lot of restaurants that are struggling. And I'm just wondering how this is going to help them. Um, and also just in terms of boxcar, I think someone brought it up at the township committee meeting that they are not part of the SID, but yet events are held there. There's uh, music there. So how does that dovetail with the fact that they're not part of the SID? Um, and then last, well, no, I have a couple more things. Um, Can I just ask what, you, just wrap, you could start wrapping. So I'm trying to get through my three minutes, sorry. You're, you're uh, through it, but I'm, get, I'm letting you wrap up. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was. Okay. You can't really see when you're when you're on here. Oh, you're right. Um, just in terms of founding day, last year there was a little political um, bent to the stuff the bus aspect. There were politicians gathering, and I know the candidate last year, uh, Miss Romano and her her um, fellow candidate, 
Cohen were there and present and pictures were taken, et cetera. Is that same opportunity going to be offered to all the candidates of all the parties or is it is it going to be eliminated in terms of any politicizing going on at this event? Um, and that's that's really, really uh, all I had to say. Oh, okay. one more important thing. Actually, Oyen Oalabi came to the township committee meeting and asked about and told uh, the township committee about a Black History Month event on February 25th. I didn't hear it mentioned here, and I think it's really important that our community support that event and that that this uh, organization and the board uh, do what it can to drive uh, people to the event and support because we have nothing in Melbourne for Black History Month. So I really feel um, it's a shame that it wasn't mentioned. I'd like to mention it. it's being held on February 25th. So um, where is it being held it. and what is it? It's at the high school, as I recall, in the auditorium, or I, I'm not sure if it's just only at the in the auditorium of the high school. I believe it begins at 4 p.m., either 3 or 4 p.m. And um, there are going to be all kinds of events, you know, from uh, like a fashion show. I think I heard there's food. There's going to be speakers of different kinds celebrating various African cultures. Uh, and it's just to really bring the community in to become more aware of, um, you know, the impact of our bl fellow African-Americans uh, in terms of what they've done in the American history story. And I think it would be wonderful if we could uh, all be supportive of that event. Thank you. I, and thank you for mentioning that. And I think we try to, uh, if we know about events and we're aware of them, we certainly try to publicize them. Um, okay. Steve, if, if before we get to the next mm -hmm. speaker, ju just a point on uh, Boxcar. Yeah. There was some, some, I thought that was in the district. Yeah, so that's been mentioned repeatedly um, in the last couple of weeks that Boxcar is not in the SID. So that's not correct. The Boxcar site, right? Because so let's step back to how the, the zone is, is configured. It's based on zoning. Um, it's so the Boxcar bar, right? And the train station that it is housed in is within the Chatham Road Short Hill Station District. That's for the boundary. So it's within the physical boundary of the city. However, because the township owns the train station, it is an exempt property. Just like we have some residential properties that are within the boundaries that are exempt. Um, there was at one point a not-for-profit that was exempt that's uh, later been sold. So just because a property is exempt does not mean that it's not entitled to the benefits. It's one of these quirks in a SID, but a nonprofit, a government property, a utility, um, a church, if it was in the SID district, those are exempt from paying the SID assessment. However, they're entitled to the same benefits because they're within the boundaries. So to say that the boxcar is not in the SID is incorrect. It does not get assessed. It doesn't get assessed. However, that doesn't yeah. preclude us from hosting events or supporting them because they're in the boundaries just like everybody else. So I think it's important. You know, it's, it's a good question to ask uh, from Ms. Pasternak because it is a bit of a quirk, but the boxcar bar and the, uh, and it doesn't matter if it's the boxcar bar or anything else, right? That building itself is within the boundaries and that's why um, it's included. Thanks, thanks, I, I was curious. Uh, Jesse, anybody else? Oh, okay. Good evening, Perry Urso, 514 Milburn Avenue in Short Hills. Um, I appreciate that you have public comment at the end. And fortunately, I was too, wasn't able to watch the meeting, so I don't have, um, but just going based on your agenda, I do have a few questions. Um, I have asked in the past, is there any chance in the near future that you're going to put your um, Zoom link by hyperlink just to make it a little bit easier by the uh, press of a finger? And I know I've repeatedly asked that and that hasn't been addressed or it's just not gonna exist. Uh, secondly, I see that you have um, your music events, you have dates and times, but you don't have locations. Is that expected at a later date? And lastly, if um, I was present this morning at the solid waste garbage uh, collection, there's some concerns there, um, is it, Will it become available to the property owners and tenants to be able to have the actual exhibit that should have been attached to the contract between Giordano and the Township of Milburn? Exhibits meaning which actually properties were in fact getting picked up. And um, 
there should have been an exhibit attached to the actual contract. So other than that, thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Be safe getting home. It's ugly out there. Thank you. I don't know if you have any information. I have information. a couple things. Okay. Um, yeah, that contract information. So I'm not going to speak to that. Jesse oh, can, but there were a couple of other items that, that came up that I think warrant um, the insurance policy registration that yeah. Mr. Feld brought up. Uh, Jesse and I are both aware of that and the township um, is, is going to be um, taking some sort of action on that. I just, I don't want to speak to it because I don't think we've firmed that up, but, but the township is aware of it certainly. Um, and it is a, uh, it's a strange one that's come out of Trenton, but we're going to have to work with it. Um, but certainly that's not, municipal that was done at the state level. Um, Jesse, I'm sure can look into the uh, suggestion that 80% of police overtime is used for the main street closure. That's a pretty significant number. So if that's the case, certainly we should get to the bottom of it. Although I'm a bit incredulous that that's accurate. Yeah, overall, overall overtime, that's not true, but my guess is probably close to 80%, if not more of overtime for special events would be related to the closure of that. Events. So it may have been for the special events category. Um, and and that'll be mitigated this year as well because we're going to have the permanent closure. So um, you, there won't be that that same need because it'll be just closed for a two month period. Okay. That was part of the effort to, to bring down cost. Um, Ms. Pasternak brought up the holiday lighting upgrades in the outer districts. Um, couldn't agree more. Um, Amanda and I did work with the town this year. I think we got a stipend of what, six, five or six grand, I think. Um, there's certainly a long way to go in terms of holiday decor. It's extremely expensive when you have a SID this large. Um, we don't have the budget to provide it, so it's something that the town needs to provide. Um, I think the, the physical reality is that the only place where we have electrified poles is here in the downtown area where the complete streets poles were installed. So you can't use the other poles throughout the town um, because there's no electrical hookup. So even if you wanted to illuminate them, you can't. Um, the other challenge is that, you know, even for, you know, cross street lighting that you'd want to do, um, the, the poles in a lot of places don't line up properly. And so you, you'd have this strange looking lighting. So we evaluated certainly and, and quite diligently the holiday lighting. There's some real physical obstacles, but it's going to be something that we're going to try to enhance this year as well. But I think it's a, it's a fair question and certainly it's a frustration for us. Yeah, it's something we will talk about. Yeah, there's, you know, I think the reality is, and anyone in this room can acknowledge it, that this town does not have a lot of infrastructure upgrades outside of complete streets. And you see that, right? And that the only place that we can illuminate are the pedestrian scale lights that were done for complete streets. If the lighting was improved um, in other locations and poles were removed or poles were straightened or lights were modernized, we could do it. Um, and so it's not that we don't want to, it's just we don't have the infrastructure to do it. I could comment on that. Um, there are a few poles, I know, on Upper Millburn that do have the electric, but it gets complicated because you're then working with JCPNL and not all of them have it. So you may have seen some of the large snowflakes lit up, but they're kind of the um, exception to what is, is possible out there. What we did do is we um, worked with the town to purchase metal snowflakes of different sizes and we put them in the other districts, um, whether it be on a uh, parking sign or along Morris Turnpike, we put them in the ground uh, along the sidewalk. So we were doing whatever we could um, that we felt was economical and effective. And it's, it's absolutely been on our mind to make sure that when you come to Milburn Short Hills, wherever you go, you feel like you're part of the holidays and the celebration. So we'll continue to work on that. And, and then just two other quick items. Yeah, um, Ms. Pasternak asked if the restaurants were subsidizing anything for restaurant week. Mm -hmm. No one's subsidizing anything. Um, they can set their own pricing. Obviously, it's there in their best interest as business owners to make sure they're not losing money on the deals they're putting together. We trust that they know that. And we're not asking anybody for any type of compensation or contribution. So sub subsidizing anything is, is not uh, an accurate characterization. And then finally, regarding Black History Month, the first time I heard about it was at the TC meeting last week. Um, certainly if, if Ms. Olawabi wants us to participate or seated to participate, um, we always just need a little advance notice. So um, you see how long it takes to put events together and get proper marketing out. So. Um, whatever she or any of her colleagues want to do going forward, uh, we're happy to participate. Just give us the heads up. 
Yeah, I want to say something as well. Um, so when it comes to Black History Month, we've been celebrating that as Explorer. We invited all of the businesses to self-identify themselves if they'd like to be highlighted as a Black business owner and tell their story. Um, so if you check our social media, um, we have Melissa from Bombshell Beauty Bar, which, which I first feature, and it's one of the most viewed reels we've had in six months. And the next one we'll be doing will be with Carl from Garden State Hemp. So we're looking at this from working with the businesses from storytelling and acknowledging these members of the community. So, and as far as other events, uh, as other people have said, as soon as we find out about something, we will post about it. We just did a post on March 4th. So just let one of us know if you know there's a lot going on and we're, we're glad to promote whatever's happening in the community. Great. Thank you. Thanks for the quick uh, responses. Anybody else up there, Jesse? Yeah, quick question. The main street Hang on, let me just close. Uh, I will just close public comments. Um, Jesse, do you know, I noticed um, when it was closed, uh, throughout the summer, that there was a lot of people that were just walking around and just kind of looking at people. Did you see that at all? Yeah, there was a lot of people that were just walking around and looking at people. Did you see that at all? time was reduced. So why did they come on the weekend and not during the week? Because during the week it was crowded. During the um, I believe there was just some concern about the cost from year to year. And so they decided to, um, you know, Alex worked with the police chief um, and advised the committee that we'd be reducing the, um, the amount of overtime. But, um, you know, they operate generally in sectors. So there's always someone that's covering the downtown that's not far away. It was just a matter of how much uh, physical presence we wanted in the enclosure itself. Thank you. Thanks. Good question. All right. Before we adjourn, does anybody else have any questions or comments or anything to offer? No? Although not a member, I uh, I don't sure. want I don't want to supersede any member of the board. But I had two you know, quick exactly. questions. So is um uh, is uh, board member Ashley Schultz on Zoom? No. Okay. Um, and then my second question was regarding the next meeting. At a prior meeting, there was a discussion of rescheduling it, and I saw in the packet it's still listed as uh, March 16th. So, I was just, March 14th, right? Yeah, it is. I was just going to announce it's Tuesday. Oh, I'm sorry. It's been Thank moved you. to Tuesday, March 14th. Yeah, unless there's uh, unless there's any change from the group, I am going to advertise it as such. Coordinator. Thank you. Um, 6 30. 6 on March 14th. Same time, different day, same place. Same SID time. Tuesday. Same SID place. It's time. Uh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Stop reading it. That's what I always. <laughs> that's what happened. Uh, see, I always announce the next meeting. You know, the funny part, so, Ryan, is it's in the a, same place every time. time. I see a German. My eyes just block. Close. That's it. Close my eyes. Shut down. All right. If uh, nobody has anything else, uh, we have a motion to adjourn our meeting. Thank you all. Thank you. Favorite.